Thank you, Robert. It is great to be with you during a very exciting week. You just said exciting. <laughs> um, in my mind, I'm not sure exciting is the term I would use. You tell me why you said exciting on Wednesday. Both houses of Congress will vote to certify the Electoral College election of Joe Biden. You and I, both staunch conservatives, constitutional, uh, strict constitutionalists, not big fans of the alleged president-elect. Why do you see this as exciting? First of all, Robert, I see it as exciting because I love the Constitution, and what we're seeing now is the inner workings of the brilliance of the framers of our Constitution. Every problem, this is all part of the checks and balances. We always throw that word around when we're talking about our Constitution, but we're seeing these checks and balances. And one of the ways things get checked in a presidential election is if once ballots are certified, they can be objected to. And I, I want to break there because I know you're going to have another question about objections. No, no, you that can is, uh, take all the time you want. Okay. What we're talking about on Wednesday, Robert, is simply members of the House and the Senate objecting when electoral votes are read out, when the certificates reflecting how electors in each state, like Louisiana, how they voted. It's read out loud, and typically it just passes by in the news. Nothing ever gets reported. It, it, we have had this twice before, 1969, regarding some votes that were supposed to go to Richard Nixon and Spiro Agnew, but went to George Wallace and Curtis LeMay. The objection was made, it was debated, and then those that electoral vote was counted. It happened again more recently in 2005 when George W. Bush was reelected and a, a representative from Ohio and Senator Barbara Boxer of California both objected in writing. They debated it for two hours, then they accepted the electoral vote from Ohio. There so are right now, pardon me, right now I think is the is it 11 Republican senators, Kennedy from Louisiana among them, maybe it's 14, I don't remember. And and 140 some odd Republican members of the House of Representatives will object to the certification of Biden's election. Has there ever been objections to the electoral college results in this number? No, nowhere near this. And I was going to finish by saying those two examples I just read you were one state. We're talking about, well, I don't think they would do all 50, but they certainly were going to focus on the disputed battleground states. I certainly expect Pennsylvania, Michigan, probably Arizona, um, Wisconsin, certainly Wisconsin, maybe Nevada. I can see six or seven being objected to. But this is the interesting thing, Robert. Clearly, it's got to be in writing. One Senate, one member, of the, one, one House representative member, and one senator both have to sign a document saying we object, and concisely, this is why. That's easy to understand. Okay, what, what then? What then, Royal? You know, I object. Okay, let's debate. Let's fight over it, and then what? What's so interesting to me, Aaron, is once the debate's done, there, I don't expect both houses, a majority in both houses, to accept the objections. In other words, I think the objections will fail. What is interesting to me, though, is that there is a couple... Again, we're in an area with which there's very little precedent. Vice, I meant to say the president of the Senate is the vice president. So when I say president of the Senate, I'm talking about Vice President Pence. Mm -hmm. He will be presiding. But so far in history, and just because you know how much I love this, I went and looked, and the, his presiding is pretty limited to things like procedural issues, parliamentary questions, but the statute does not say he couldn't address, it, you know, he, he couldn't decide the admissibility of certain electoral ballots. It does not say he couldn't do that. So what I'm saying is this is an area we really haven't been in before to this, to this degree. So what could Pence do? I think he could say, you know, one of two things he could say, I'm simply not recognizing the fraudulent ballots. And again, this would be unprecedented, but still, he's the presiding officer. I'm not going to recognize what I consider to be fraudulent ballots from the six states. And so, therefore, neither of the presidential candidates made it to 270. Therefore, 
disk now goes into the House of Representatives for the contingent election. So you do expect you, Pence to do that? Do you think Mike Pence has uh, the Wavos. The, the the nerve the nerve to literally throw America into chaos and i'm thinking well, back to 1960 let, when when there was plenty of evidence that kennedy in carrying illinois specifically cook county specifically chicago that there was uh, some sneaky s- s- stuff going on there and nixon said for the good of america I, maybe i need to let this go it, what do you think true. mike pence all, might do all that was true that you just said robert except that was one state This is six, maybe seven. This is, if you look at the evidence, and there has been evidence, just no court has taken it up and listened to it on its merits. I promise you guys, there is evidence. There are witnesses who've come forward under really threat to themselves to say, I mean, you've seen the testimony of some of those people. There are hundreds of affidavits. There truly is evidence. Just the media is ignoring it, and no court has taken it up on the merits. But let me get back to Pence. He could do that, or... He could say, you know what, I'm accepting both the Republican and the Democrat ballots because some states, Republicans filed their own certificate of electors, even though the Democrat candidate purportedly won. If Pence does that, he essentially cancels out Biden's victory in places like Pennsylvania. Then no one gets to 270. Say he does that in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Those are pretty flagrant you could argue so what happens so what happens then royal if neither one of them is at 270 where are we we go straight into the house of representatives for what's called the contingent election Aaron, and each state then has one vote it's not based on majority every state there's 50 states which means there's 50 votes and that because most of them are republican dominated it's most likely president trump would then be decided the winner in the contingent election but i'm telling you guys Here's the bigger question of, first of all, people... But who, who saying, votes for Louisiana? Move. Is it one of our congressmen? Is it... Louisiana would be a Republican vote because in the House of Representatives, our... Uh, what do we have? Six? Our legislature is yeah. Republican-dominated. Yeah. No, but I mean, so, who actually would press the button to say Louisiana votes for blank? Well, th- I mean, they would do it in conjunction, but I think the electors in Louisiana might have to meet again to say... We're sending our – it's all driven by the state legislatures, clearly. So the procedural part of it, Aaron, would be worked out. It might be a little different in each state. But I want you all to, to keep two things in mind. One, if what appears to have occurred – we haven't even talked about Dominion voting. If, if people were able to go online and flip votes and do these things, and it happened in as many states as it appears to it, one is too many. But we're not talking about one like the Kennedy election. Maybe six, maybe seven. I promise if we don't address this, and at least by objecting, I think we address it. But if we don't object it in four years or even two in the midterm elections, the cheating is just going to be even more sophisticated. I wonder if we ever will have another honest election if this is not addressed. Wednesday night, last question. Thanks for your time, Royal Alexander. Wednesday night at 6 p.m., Wednesday evening at 6 or 7 or 8 p.m. Is Joe Biden really the president-elect of the United States? Well, it depends. (laughs) I'm not (laughs) trying to dodge, Robert, I promise. But we, I can't even point to a precedent to say, because, well, let me do one other thing, guys, and it's just that this is so important. The Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court has stayed out of all this. Oh, we're not touching it. No, 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 no standing, which, if I could tell you all, Whenever they want to not really take something on, they can invoke standing or other doctrines like the doctrine of latches, which are not constitutional substantive. They're they're like, I mean, standing is important. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm saying I've seen the Supreme Court go real hard on standing and then kind of back off and go real light on standing. So they didn't want to get involved. If they were to come in now, if Pence were to do what I'm t- typically just completely theorizing, this is a hypothetical, if Pence were to do what he could do because his power is not clearly defined as the presiding officer. If the Supreme Court were to come in then and say, because now the U.S. Supreme Court would be reaching directly into a constitutional function of an equal branch. 
over here, you didn't even want to take the lawsuit between Texas and these other states, which clearly you had standing so for. So the point even being, you pardon me for interrupting, we got to go. So the point being okay. that, and this is not on a lot of people's radars, is uh-huh. that this could be not only a very historical week for the United States, but very chaotic. It, it could, but... Things haven't settled down. 75, 76 million voters who voted for President Trump, many of them totally do not accept this result. So it's unsettled right now, Robert.